Get your Bible and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I am a teacher. I want you to be a student. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to look at verse 12. And we're going to read that down to verse number 22. I'm preaching to you God's grace. At least know what I'm saying. God's grace is everything God has done for you. Let me put it another way. God has done for you everything. <laughs> and my job is to help you to see what God has done for you. Your job is to do one thing. Believe. believe. And you can't do that if you don't hear. How can they hear without a preacher? The preacher's in the house. Amen. So hear ye the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 12. I'm talking this camera right here. Verse number 12 say, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he has raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you are yet in your sins, if God didn't raise Jesus from the dead. Then they also which are asleep in, asleep, or fall asleep in Christ are perished. And if this life, now that's a very important verse, verse, verse number 18, because when God raised Jesus from the dead, he raised us from the dead. So he said, if then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ, that's 2,000 years ago, they are perished because Christ didn't rise from the dead. But he did. Then he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we also are all men most miserable. But, <laughs> hallelujah. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So when God raised Jesus from the dead, he raised us from the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So when God raised Christ from the dead, he made us alive. Amen. All right, now let's, let's see what our message is today. Let's go to answer the question in Matthew chapter 16, 19, 16, I'm sorry. We ask this question, Matthew 19, 16. This was the question from last week. Last week's message was a question. Today we answer that question. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came unto him, saying, Good master, what shall I do? Or what good thing shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? Now, the first of all, when he said, What good thing must I do that I might inherit eternal life? That's works. Say, that's works. Because he said, I have to do something. He said, What good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's why God answers his question, in John chapter 3. But here, we're going to see it. Uh, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. But if, if you would enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which? So he knew he had all the commandments. Verse number 29. I'm sorry, verse 28. His disciples said to him in verse 27, Well, what shall we receive then, therefore? And verse 28 says, And Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you, that he which have followed me in the regeneration, say that with me, in the regeneration. He's telling them when it's going to happen. It happened in the regeneration. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken houses and brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and wife and children and lands, for my name's sake, that was still the Old Testament, 
Now he's switched to the New Testament. Shall receive. When are you going to receive it? In the regeneration. Shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. You may be seated. Father, I thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. I thank you for giving us the Spirit of God to teach us. You are the wisdom of God, Father. You are the knowledge of God. You are the understanding. You are the Godhead. You are the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is the wisdom. The Son is the wisdom. And the Holy Ghost is the wisdom. You are the knowledge. The Father is the knowledge. The Son is the knowledge. The understanding is the knowledge. You are the Godhead. We can't get this stuff without you. So now we ask that you will lead us, guide us, teach us, give us understanding of your word. And all the degree that prayer says, amen. All right, now this morning, you would have to get the tape this morning. There's no way I can go back and duplicate uh, what I did this morning. Uh, but anyway, I did part number five this morning. I'm on part number six. Uh, we are closing out volume two. Now, next week, I'm going to have to do probably a special because i got to get caught up on a couple, couple things. But anyway, that's if the Lord would say so. Now, I'm going to answer the question. Last week's question was, uh, how do I get eternal life? So hopefully you can get that last week and put it with this tape uh, today because today I'm going to talk about you must inherit. But I'm, I use the word through faith. You must, through faith, inherit eternal life. Will you say that with me? You must, through faith, inherit eternal life. Right. It has to be through faith. Let me show you why. Because you get nothing from God except it's through faith. Now, the word through faith means through believing. You get nothing from God unless you believe the word. That's how you get stuff from God. All right. We'll show you that in a moment. When are you going to say that? Today I'm going to be reading out of the NLT for those who follow me uh, on Facebook, uh, other places, uh, podcasts, uh, other places, the web, uh, other places. This morning she named them all. Today it's like, all right, we'll try that again later. All right, now, but you must inherit eternal life. That's the only way you're going to get it. So to inherit eternal life, you want to put down your notes, God must make me an heir. But you don't want to, you got to understand. Now remember, God already did this. But you got to receive it. Let's go to Acts 26 first. Let's go to the book of Acts 26, and we're going to look at verse number 18. Because in the book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, he's going to tell you how you get things from God. I gave you Romans 3.30. That's you get what God has for your life through faith. Romans 3.30. Let's go back. Let's just put them on the screen as we go along. Romans chapter 3, verse 30. Everything you get in your life is through faith. That means the gospel has to be preached by a man or woman of God that God has given you and you believe it. And you just can't preach anything. You got to preach the gospel of Christ or the gospel of grace. You can't get no inheritance without preaching the gospel of Christ because each gospel had an intent and a purpose. The gospel of the kingdom was to show that Jesus is the Christ. That was his purpose. The gospel of Christ is not to prove that he's Christ because he's already been risen from the dead. And God has made him both Lord and Christ. So the gospel of Christ, you preach Christ. Before the cross, you preach the gospel of the kingdom. But the gospel of the kingdom now has been revealed. That's why it's called the gospel of Christ. Uh, the gospel of the kingdom was a mystery. It was a parable. You preach parables. But now you don't need the parable because you have the substance. And Christ is the substance. That's why the Bible says in, in Hebrew 11 and 1, now faith is the substance. He's talking about Christ. Okay. Uh, now, okay, here we go. Romans 3.30. I'm going to give you a few verses. Seeing it is one God who shall justify the circumcision by faith. Now, we gave you, told you who the circumcision is. The circumcision was Israel. 
or the Jewish believer. And then the uncircumcision was through faith. All right. Then I gave you Galatia chapter 2 and verse 27. Verse 2 and 7, I'm sorry, not 27. Galatia chapter 2 and verse 7. Told you Paul preached to the circumcision and Peter preached to the uncircumcision. I'm giving you this because I'm showing you how your Bible operates. You have to know who is your teacher. That's why I'm doing a series, and I'm on volume six already, on Paul preached Christ. All right, you got to know who he preached. He preached Christ because he, his message was to the Gentile or the uncircumcision. Galatia 2, 7 says, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me, Paul says, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed to Peter. All right, then it says in verse number 8, for he that wrought effectually in Peter, or that worked effectually in Peter, to the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So your apostle in the new covenant is the Gentiles. Now I know we have something today we have, but I don't want to get into that. People saying they are, that's between them and God. But I have an apostle that I follow in the Bible. So uh, that makes me humble. I don't have to be the apostle. I just follow him. Let's move on. But everybody have they say so. Amen. All right. Now, I'm not calling you, saying you are not an apostle. You can be whoever you want to be. Amen. I'm grown now. Like I say, I'm grown. All right. But I'm not here to put people down is my point. My message is to the body of Christ. I know who my ministry is. Okay. Now, I know there's a lady here called me Bishop Big Daddy. She sees something. Amen. That's my daughter over there. All right. Now, let's go into the word, shall we? So the day we answered the question, the question was how do I get eternal life? That was the, what the rich man asked. Who then can be saved? Jesus told him it's going to happen in the regeneration. So we are in the regeneration because we are on the, this side of the cross. We are after the cross. All right. So God has already regenerated all men. But we have to know what it means. Okay? Now, uh, so you must, through faith, inherit the kingdom. All right, so that's, that's what I want to show you. And let me give you the word, definition for the word inherit, because to inherit something, you've got to obtain it. How do I obtain it? How do I acquire it? How do I possess it? And I'm going to show you, coming out of this, I'm going to show you, you must, you must become an heir of God. And that's what I want to show you. You must become an heir of God. So we, we showed you that in Romans chapter 8. Just going to give you a little glimpse where, where it is. Oh, we got to go to Acts chapter 26 first. Thank you. But we'll show you that in Romans. Let's look at Acts chapter 26 first. Thank you. That's what I need. Acts chapter 26 verse 18. Now this is Paul's ministry. So when you see what Paul's ministry is, this is what helps me. When I found out that somebody... I'm following in the Bible. Paul said, follow me. That's why I follow Paul. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Well, if he's following Christ, I don't have to go worry about who I'm supposed to follow. Just follow Paul. If I was in the old covenant, I would follow Moses. Why? Because God called Moses, and if I want to get to the promised land, I just follow Moses. I don't have to be Moses. Just follow Moses. All right. Now, in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, this was Paul's ministry, to open their eyes. Now, this is what preaching the gospel does. Open their eyes, turn them from darkness. Now, remember, this is what the gospel do when you preach it. It opens your eyes, it turns you from darkness to light, turns you from the power of Satan under God, that they may receive. You got it? You turn them from so they might receive. What are they going to receive? Number one, forgiveness of sins. Now that's there because that's the cross. At the cross, our sin was forgiven. And the only way our sin was forgiven, we just had, it's been done by Christ. 
So all you have to do is receive it. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to get water baptized to get your sins forgiven. You just receive. It's already been done. It's been given to you by God. Do you understand that? Forgiveness of sin was given to us by God. You don't have to do anything to receive it. If somebody gives you something, you don't have to do anything. If you do, it makes it works. And Romans eleven six 6 told us, not of works. Ephesians chapter 2 told you, say, but not of works. It's nothing that you did. All right. Because if it's works, it's no more grace. Acts 26, 18. That they may receive their forgiveness of sin first, and then after that, you receive your inheritance. Say that with me. Number one, you receive forgiveness of sins. Now, I'm showing you why so many people have not received the Holy Spirit. Because they have never received forgiveness of sins. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit until you receive forgiveness of sins. So if you don't think God has forgiven you of your sins, how are you going to receive the Holy Spirit? See, that's what religion did. Religion put in your heart that your sins are not forgiven because you ain't been water baptized. You don't have the Holy Ghost because you ain't been water baptized. That's a lie from hell. You did not get your sins forgiven because somebody baptized you. I read that first, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 17 says, if Christ was not raised from the dead, you are yet in your sins. See, you got to decide to believe the Bible. I keep saying to you, people who go into churches, they are not preaching to you the Bible. They are preaching to you their denomination. They are going by what they were taught from the man or woman above them. That's how I was deceived. I was following man, didn't know, didn't know it. And so now I'm following the Lord. The Holy Spirit's my teacher. All right. So Paul says, God told Paul that must receive forgiveness of sin, Acts 26, 18. They had to receive forgiveness of sin, number one, and conjunction and inheritance. Your inheritance is eternal life. Let me show you the same thing I just told you. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 32. You cannot, I beg you, do not die and go to hell. My responsibility is to preach the word of grace to you so the Holy Ghost can make you a believer. People can go to church all their life. They are not a believer. They question God's word. You have to have the Holy Spirit to believe God's word. And so many people go to church all their life and they die and go to hell because they think they already know. You are a product of somebody's information. You are a product of someone else's information. You're basing your information on what you heard somebody else say and do. And God is trying to get you to treat him that way. Be a product of God's information, which is his word. So all the things you say you believe, and somebody asks you what scripture you got for that, you don't have one. Because you heard it through the grapevine. I would just be a little, little humor to you. Maybe you'll say amen now. All right. All right. That's why God said to Adam, who told you you were naked? That stopped all that because he know that come directly from the devil himself. All right. Now, verse what I just gave you. I'm waiting for the screen. That's what I'm saying. So you may want to tell me. Romans 8.32. Thank you. So in Romans chapter 8, verse number 32, 
One verse. See, if you, can, if you don't receive Christ, you can't get what God has for your life. From here we go to Matthew 6.33. See, I tell you, then I come back five minutes later, that's what I said. You like, huh? What did he say? All right. Romans chapter 8, verse number 32. Let's start at verse 31. So I back up one verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. There you go. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now I'm going to say something to you. God is not for you until Christ is in you. See, you got a whole lot of folk. See, if I go back to the Old Testament, God was with them. But he wasn't for them. But once Christ is in you, God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's why in the Old Covenant, if you follow that reference right there, uh, in verse number 31, you'll be able to go over and see that in Numbers chapter 9. Can I come right there and come right back? Well, let me do the next verse before I go there. And verse 32 says, so that's Numbers chapter 14, verse 9. Remember I told you that? He quoted that for when they went over into the promised land. He said, if God is for us, you know, you got to get it. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Remember, he that spared not his own son is the cross. Since Christ has crucified his own son, he delivered him up for how many people? He delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Since God has given us his son, now he can give us all things. God cannot give you his inheritance until you receive his son. Say that with me. God cannot give me his inheritance until I receive his son. See, so what, that's my responsibility is to make sure you have received his son and what his son did. So I'm only giving you everything that his son has done. You have to believe that. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He crucified him for us all. Now, if you believe that, how shall he not with him freely give you all things, but he can't give you all things without him. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, now let's move on. Now, what I want to do now is take you to the next point. Now let's give you what I had. What else I'd say? Luke 6.33. Matthew 6.33. Thank you. I want the one out of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now watch what he said about the kingdom. Now we know in this house who the kingdom is, if you've been in this ministry for a while. The Bible said the kingdom of God is within you. So I wonder who the kingdom is. You see, you ought to know about now. If you, if you have Christ in you, that should not be the question. My job is to make a believer out of you. That's my responsibility. I know a lot of folks think they are believers, but you cannot have a spirit in you that lies and you are a believer. And if you have believed a lie, you, can't, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Let me say this to you. When you have the spirit of truth in you, no lie is of the truth. And if you believe a lie, the Holy Spirit will get it out of you. He will not stop until that lie leaves you. He is called the spirit of truth. So that's why you got to trust him. He's not going to deceive you. He's trying to get out of you who has deceived you. When you believe a lie, you have been deceived. Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Let's back up a couple of verses. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30. Here we go. He says, we're going to come to this camera. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more 
clothes you of you of little faith? He talked to them about their faith because they didn't believe God could clothe the grass that die every year. They could not believe the God that would put clothes on them. Now he's not talking about physical, he's talking about spiritual because he's talking about righteousness, which is your clothes and joy and peace. Romans 14, 17, we go there next. So he's talking to them about what he has for them, which is the kingdom. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Well, whither shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. They are an unbeliever. Your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of all these things. Your your heavenly Father know you have need of all these things. The Bible says he know you have need of all these things before you ask. But seek, he's telling you how to get all these things. Seek first, not second, third. Seek first the kingdom of God, Christ. You got to first have Christ in you. And all these other things shall be added. Seek first, make sure you got Christ in you because he is the hope of glory of everything that God has. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added unto you. Then he said, take no thought therefore for tomorrow. Tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. Otherwise you into tomorrow is your problem. Enjoy today, because tomorrow is not promised. Somebody ought to say amen. All right, do I, is anything out there now? Romans 14, 17, okay, I did say it. Anything I say, you can put down. Anything else on it? Numbers 14, 9, we'll go in a moment. Romans 14, 17 told you the kingdom and what the kingdom is. And this is one of the things I'm, I want to make sure that you understand. You've got to have the kingdom in you. The kingdom is not a building. The kingdom is a person. And if the kingdom is in you, I should not keep pumping you up for joy. Because joy is a part of your kingdom. And joy is not something you can hold. You can't hold back joy. Joy is the strength of the Lord. How are you going to hold God back? The problem is you got to make sure you got joy. Your strength, a lot of you praying that God will strengthen you, and so are I. I went through a tremendous, lot of tremendous things uh, in the ministry, in my body for its health concern. I don't share a lot of things with the church. One day I will. But when you talk about living by faith, you ask that woman over there, do I live by faith? I live through faith. But I have to understand that I have to com always count on the Holy Spirit. I not only went through an open heart surgery, I went through two more things at the same time. But I couldn't let you know, because I don't need pity. I don't say that to put nobody down. I, I can use your prayers, but you got to know the word to pray for me. Don't pray, don't, don't pray and prop me up on, on every leaning side. Don't, don't go there with me. So you don't know how to pray. That's how they pray in the old times. Prop him up on every leaning side. <laughs> Yay, Lord. Then I'm walking around prop, prop, right? Don't prop, don't prop me up. Pray that I walk. Yeah. Don't prop me up. All right. Now. Amen. All right. Now. The kingdom of God. It's not. First he told you it's not. It's not meat and drink. What is he talking about? It's not natural things. But the kingdom of God is righteousness. Now the key, the key is, listen to me now, but the kingdom of God is righteousness. Otherwise, if you have the kingdom in you, then why you can't live right? 
See, you gotta, you gotta be able to say, why are you doing what you're doing if the kingdom is right in here? Because the kingdom of God is in you, that's righteousness, and if your fiber is righteousness, then why can't you be right? God raised you from the dead to justify you, to make you right with God. You gotta look at the thing in your life and you gotta be able to say, that's not right before God. But you can't do that without the Holy Spirit here. You try to do anything with the Holy Spirit in you, he's going to say to you, that's not right before God. Amen. All right? Now, that's, that's the kingdom. Righteousness, peace. See, if you got the kingdom of God in you, why are you trouble? Why do you allow trouble to dominate your life? You got people scared, scared to fly, scared to take the virus, Shot the vaccination. Now that not you, don't don't worry about it. I'm talking to people out there. Four point two, what two point eight billion? Two point six billion people. And you got to understand, there are people who won't take it because they just scared. They won't say they're scared. But if you listen to the content of the message, it's I don't want to take something, and then something happened to me. You scared? That's what you're saying. You don't say that you take a Tylenol. Never heard a word. Just pop that tile and all. <laughs> See, we say things, but we don't realize what we're saying. You have to believe God to take what God has for you to heal you. You're going to need, need to believe God to do that. You think I just took it and didn't believe God? I'm believing God. Nothing's going to happen to me. Amen. 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 I don't believe God will let them... Do something and then kill me. I don't believe that. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Amen. See, we hear all that, but then it comes down to the time. You, listen, don't you realize that's the only way I could take it? My wife and I, do you think I want to kill my wife? I don't want to go down there and something say, you did this past come, now your wife did. I said, no. I told my wife. You, when I had open heart surgery, you know why I took it? Because I said to God, I told my wife, I said, this is, this is how we're going to do it. I'm, t- I'm, I'm going to do this for Monday. We're going to take this. The man told me, you got to pass my uh, stress, test. stress test first before you can take it. Otherwise, all the stuff I'm put you through, you got to walk in here on that next morning. You can't get no wheelchair. You got to walk in here and walk where you got to go. And you got to pass before you can take that. Because if I do that without that, you could die. And I said, well, don't worry. I'll be ready. God's my witness. I told my wife, you're going to minister this Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, and then the next Sunday I'm minister. Did I tell you that before I went in? Now, remember, they flew me back from Merle Beach. Middle of my vacation, and I was in a wheelchair in Merle Beach. See, I could tell you a whole lot of stuff. But you can say you believe God. You can say it. But when you believe God, you trust God. And if God be for you. Now you got to understand something. He was with Israel. Emmanuel means God with us. It's a different when God is with you than God is for you. Because if you his son and you have his spirit, then God is for you. So if God be for you, who? What? You go back and read on. Can, 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 I'm going to go back there anyway. Wherever I am right now, hold on, hold it. See, the key is, I'm your pastor. I'm not going to tell you no lie. I got two people in this church today, Wars 3, 9 2, that I'm going to have to lay hands on in this service. God gave it, showed me that 145 this morning. 145 to 148 this morning. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 31. In Romans chapter 8, verse 30, what shall we say to these things? What things, Pastor? We got to bag up then. In verse number 28. See, the key is. When you have received Christ, Paul says in Philippians 4, 13, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That reminded me of what I told you I'm going to go to the next time with Philippians 4 and 19. When you hear the tape, you will remind you. So now I'm not going to be able to go, but it was but my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory, but it's going to be by Christ Jesus. Well, where is Christ Jesus? See, that's what I got to get you to know. You got to know where he is. If you still wait for him to come, he has not arrived. So I'm not looking for him to come. I know where he is. Faith is not going to happen. Faith is. You can't operate in faith if it's not a now. The first thing it said now, faith is. See, if you're waiting for God, that's not faith, that's hope. And a whole lot of folk are just hoping and they wonder why God's not moving. Hope is going to make you not ashamed. You can't fight the good fight of hope. So when it come down to a situation where I had to have open heart surgery, I had to be dead for so many minutes. The man had my heart in his hand and the machine kept you alive. I got a witness back there, right there, sitting right at the back of that table named Ken Weishart. Am I lying, brother? You know what I'm talking about. He's been through this. That's no game. You lay on that table and they hook you up to a machine and they take your heart out and they work on you just like a car engine and put it back in, show you up and say, okay, now run. <laughs> that man came to my room for so many days. I was in intensive care for 14 days. When they came to my room on the 11th day or 12th day, they said to me, take all that stuff off him. Take it all off. I'm going to, what, they were just running through my room, all kind of doctors. I said, what, what's going on? She said, your heart has found its rhythm. Yeah. I'm going like, excuse me? She said, yeah, for the last so many days, we've been keeping you alive on a machine. That's why we couldn't take all this stuff off. But I told my wife, I said, when this is over and the third week is done, and my wife said, no, you ain't going to preach today now. You're staying in that bed. You ain't coming. I said, no, I'm going to church this. She said, you ain't going today. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay. Next Sunday, though, I'll be in the poor pit preaching. And I never look back. What I'm talking about, you got to know that if you have faith in God, you got to also trust him. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And verse 28, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. He already predestinated me. He called me. He justified me. And he's already glorified. I'm a son of the living God. Yes. Nothing shall separate the believer from God's love. I'm standing today because of God's love. God's love is not hypocritical. God's love is all-powerful. God's love never fails. Never. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now he's going to name some things. From there, we're going to switch over to the NLT, verse 32. Romans 8, 32. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, we're going to start reading verse 32 in the NLT. 
Romans chapter 8 and verse number 32. If I had a little hoop on me there, I'd be a, <laughs> yeah. But I don't go there now. Been delivered. Change man. <laughs> Praise God. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 32. We're reading out of the NLT. Verse 31 says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Yes. I'm asking you a question. I said, won't he give it? Yes. Now, this man said, won't he give? But Ephesians 1 and 3 said he has. So we know during that time it was written, he talked about wanting, but he didn't understand he has. Somebody said he has. Yes. Right, he's given us everything else. Yes. Already been done. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own. No one, he says, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Amen. Who then will condemn us? Nobody. For God, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. He is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Praying for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? Or are persecuted, hungry, destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we will kill every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things. Overwhelmingly, overwhelming victory. I like that, overwhelming victory. Somebody say overwhelming victory. Yeah, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us, past tense. That's what the cross stood for. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Can a virus, no, he didn't say that. Can death, can life, can angels or demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about torment or tomorrow, nor even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation would ever be able to separate us from the love of God that's in the revealed, that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can't do it. Can't do it. So why, why, did, I take, why did I take it? That's, that's one of my nurses up there in the, in the left-hand side. I got a nurse sitting on the floor out there. These, these, these people take care of me. But I must trust God. When I got things in my life that I do not understand, I got to trust God. When I get to a situation where I do not understand, when I said, Lord, what shall I do? And God said, just trust me. I said, Lord, I got to do the right thing. I'm a pastor of this ministry. What shall I do? He said, you trust me. Just follow me. Let's go. And God will confirm his word. Peace is a confirmation of God's word. You want to know what God said amen in the Bible? He said amen already. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22. So you got to come to a place that you believe God. I'm not a man who pick on anybody. I'm, that's not me. I could sit here and say I don't care, but I'll be lying. You hear me? I could sit here and say, I don't care whether you get a virus shot or not. I don't give a... But that'll be a lie. Because there's no parent who's going to say that to their children. I do care. That's why I keep bringing up every now and then. Because if everybody in here would do the right thing, we don't have to ever worry about shutting down again. Never. You know why I did it? Because if I didn't do it and she did it, then I could take it home to somebody else. What if my mama didn't do it? And I says, I'm not doing it neither. 
And then I get it and I go to my mama's house and she died. My sister died of COVID. This ain't no game. 600 plus thousand people is dead. You got people are begging you. The president of the United States walked to the microphone, camera, he said, you don't have to die. And we still think of the game. You playing with your life. You don't want to do that. You playing with somebody else's life. What if you get it and give it to your mama or your mom-in-law or your daddy or your father-in-law and they die because you wouldn't get it? It ain't no game no more. My job is to tell you the truth. You can do what you want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. But I'll be lying because it's going to break my heart. It'll break my heart. If anything happened to one of you, it breaks my heart. We had people last year, we wasn't able to be here. We were still having funerals. Yeah. Got a young lady sitting back there at the back, Sister Wiseheart. We had to eulogize her mother. Brother Woods used to sit right over there, Willie Woods. Willie Woods been utilized, he gone. There are so many people you didn't see last year. They gone. God let you live through it. Do the right thing. Don't play with your gut. Don't play with your life. Life is too short to play with. This is not going to show you brave or not brave. I had a person call me on the phone. I'm going to say this. Call me on the phone, on my house phone, my wife's phone, trying to get in touch with me. We want to protest. We are nurses, but we got to protest. Because they won't let me work at the, plant, at, at the hospital, so we're going to protest. You keep the patient. You the one keeps the patient. Your ministry is to heal. You walk in the hospital, it has the serpent on the pole. Your ministry is to heal people. And you don't want to be the one that do it yourself. Shame on you. Amen. Why would I come in here and have not been vaccinated and get up here and speak over you and some of you get COVID? It'll be my fault. This ain't no game. Why you think we stayed down a year and a half? This woman here called me every day with the white hat right here. Every day. Pastor, when we going to open that church up? I got my Easter dress. I said, Mama, we can okay then. Did you call me hunger? Every day, just about. Call Bob. Bob, maybe tell Bob why you ain't opened up. I said, Mama, I can't open up right now. We've been out of church over a year, Pastor. I said, I know it. Well, a year and three months. I want you to know something from me. I love you with God's love. I hurt. I hurt when I have to come in here and do. Now, I, I, it wasn't nothing when I did my mother. My mother was 92 years old. Sure, I miss my mother. But it hurted me. I don't want to see anybody pass away. I'm going to be here. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to be here. And with God's will, I may not be passing the church, but I'm going to be right here on the front row or sitting up there somewhere, whatever, saying, mm, when you do say something wrong, when the preacher says something wrong. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to be around. <laughs> like they used to do down south, the old preacher, he used to be over there every time he said, say it, son, say it, son. Everybody know that guy just said something wrong. Well, well. See, if, he, if there's something wrong, he said, well. <laughs> but if he was okay, he said, well, say it, son, say it. So he said a lot of wells. I would listen. 
Okay, now where am I? I did Romans. I'm done with that. Okay, now let me say, I gave you last week why you cannot inherit. I'm going to give you one of those. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Let me give you why people can't. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 through 11. This is why you can't. God gave us what keeps people from inheriting eternal life is their lifestyle. It's, I told you this morning, they love the world more than they love God. Loving the world is loving your old lifestyle more than you love God. I gave you that this morning in 1 John 2.15, and those who was taking note, 1 John 2.15, it said, love not the world, neither the thing that's in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Or the Holy Spirit is not in him. All that's in the world, he says, is on the screen. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, it's of the world. Then he told you, the world going to pass away. He's talking about this flesh. The flesh is the world. If you love the flesh more than you love God, the love of the Father is not in you. That's why I gave you this morning, what shall it profit a man? Somebody just quote the scripture out for me. Just tell me the verse. I'm sorry, they can see the verse. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Next verse says, and what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Mark 8, but for, 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 what verse? 34, okay. So you read that. I'm just giving you that for the tape. Mark, Mark 8, 34. So here's your soul. And the devil says, Give me your soul, and I give you this world's riches. That same thing he said to Jesus. We didn't read it this morning, but that's what Luke chapter 4. Read that verse. Read that. I'm not going to have time. Read that. It'll tell you. The devil says, I will give you everything. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 9. That's what the devil said to him. All these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. That's what he said to you. See, when you live in the world, that's what he offered you, and you're taking it. But it's going to cost you your soul. But you can't live right until you receive Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. No, you're not. I'm reading out the NLT. I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. First Corinthians six. This is this is an awesome thing. See, the key is the word holy. The word holy means separated under God. So, to me, to, when you become holy, that's why the Bible said, "Without holiness." No man shall see the Lord otherwise until you separate yourself to God. See, to come out of the world means to separate yourself from God. That means I don't do what the world do no more. I'm a new creation, but I don't do what the world do no more. See, you're a new creation at the cross. You're born again at the cross. But now you've got to separate yourself from the world. That's holy. Come out from among them and be ye separate. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols, those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitutes. See, we, we, we'll put on the woman and we'll see her and she'll go like that whore. Oh, we got a bad name for her. But the man is a male whore. Amen. A man is a male prostitute who like men and women, just like that woman does. So don't just put the woman down. The Bible says, none of these 
He's going to say it twice. Those who indulge in sexual sins and worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitute or practice homosexuality, or they are thieves, they are greedy people, and he's not talking about you eat a lot. Because see, there's a whole lot of folks being that they eat too much. He's not talking about that. Come on, tell somebody he's not talking about that. All right, okay. Drunkards, abusive, and cheap people. None of them will inherit the kingdom of God. He said, and some of you were once like that. Hello. See, some of y'all still do. <laughs> Baptist born, Baptist bred. Be a Baptist till I'm dead. Never live that life. Bless God. Can't stand nobody. Can't be around, nobody can be around you. The Bible says, some of you, it was, it was some of you, but you now, you're washed, you're clean. Yeah. You are made holy. Yeah. God separated you from God. God separated you from the world. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We were made, we were like that because of the Spirit of the living God. Okay, now, did I have another one? Okay, let me give you one more like this. See, all this good, but I, well, say it, just say it. Romans what? Romans 8 and 5. No, it can't be Romans 8 and 4. Romans 8 5 through 9. Romans chapter 8. When you hear the tape, you know I said Romans chapter 8 verse 5. But I said 5 through 7. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Now watch this. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. For they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. That's how you know. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Otherwise, if you're after the flesh, you're controlled by the flesh. If you're after the spirit, you're controlled by the spirit. That's how you know. You do fleshly things, and it doesn't bother you. But to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So you got to come to a place where you have life and peace, and you won't have it until you get, a, you get born, you get renewed at the cross. But you got to have life and peace now. That's the kingdom. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither therefore can be. So then that they that are in the flesh, they can't please God. And that's where people are that have not received Christ into their heart. They are still in the flesh. Now, I'm getting ready to close out this service, but I got two people that I got to pray for in this service. They don't have to move up their seat. I'm coming to them. But let me, let me finish this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 for my television audience. You who are watching us by television, watching us on YouTube, watching us on podcasts, watching us on Facebook, and all of the airways. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and where you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory, now Christ already died on the cross for you, so he saved you. But now what you got to do is keep in memory what I preach to you unless you have believed in vain. You can't live like the world just because God saved you at the cross. I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to receive him to your heart, and then you have to believe what he has done. God will give you the Holy Spirit and make you a son for real. Now, when I get to this, you're going to see that God already qualified you. You have a seat already in heavenly places. But as long as you keep living like the world, you'll never know what God has done for you. 